Yes. There we go. We are live. With the quickness on a Wednesday, halfway through the week, it's almost over. The torture is finally <laughs> going to end. <laughs> the insanity. And then it'll come back. The pain. <laughs> hey, we're going to try to help you through it with a little bit of a Linux Eve love. What's going on, everyone? Mark that midpoint. <laughs> Hello, Mir. <laughs> yes. <Boom. laughs> Oh yeah, um, mm. Romlock was asking after the stream yesterday, so what happened to episode 9 on YouTube? Uh, Pedro didn't export it in time. <laughs> <laughs> I don't have access to export the videos. <laughs> Pedro didn't remind me to export it in time. <laughs> <laughs> I got like four other ways to blame you for it, so keep going. <laughs> <laughs> Honestly, I didn't even realize until Roblox put it out. It's like, uh, so that's episode 10. Where's episode 9? It's like, oh yeah, that's not there. <laughs> I was wondering if anyone was going to notice that. <laughs> oh, we do have quite the show for everyone today. Oh man, I didn't tweet out. I'm doing a thing. I better do that. <laughs> I didn't tweet out yesterday. <laughs> I might retweet you if you've tweeted out something. I have. All right. Well, then I'm just going to be lazy and retweet you. <laughs> if I can find it, there it is. Wait. It, like, grr. What? <laughs> Was it the sausage? <laughs> what? <laughs> On my tweet? <laughs> no, no. I, I was just getting grumpy with, um... Twitter because it's like, hey, we know that you've went back and set the thing to put everything in chronological order like 30, 37 times, but, you know, we kind of mix it up. And you know, we realize that you noticed because we're showing you stuff that you don't care about, but hey, you know, you want to try it out again? Nah, man, I'm good. <laughs> like Twitter, I am specifically allowing all of your cookies for that reason. <laughs> Frickin' remember it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's what Twitter is, man. Uh, use the tools. Okay. Yeah, now that Google Plus is dead, Twitter is my only, um, social media. I even nuked my Facebook profile, finally. <laughs> I don't remember exactly what it was that caused me to nuke my Facebook profile. It was been a long time ago, too. Yeah, I think it was just, like, I general really didn't have anything. interest. Yeah. <laughs> I don't have really anything going on there. It was mostly just Nathan, um, co-worker Nathan, like, uh, tagging me and stuff. Mm -hmm. Like, random memes and jokes and puns and what have you. So I was like, well, goodbye. <laughs> Got a Google Home Mini? Hey, man. Make it do things to the lights. <laughs> you can be one of those people. Hey, watch this. Okay, Google. And Google's like, man, what else? <laughs> Illuminate. And then you spend like a minute and a half and you finally get a light to come on. So like, look, isn't that radically inefficient? <laughs> I'm down with it. Mm hmm. I don't use any of those services except exactly when I went to. Like, I'll use the apps on the phone um, uh, on Amazon and whatnot, but I turn them off afterwards. I don't like stuff on. <laughs> yeah, no, I, I carry two yeah. Android phones around, one for work, one for personal use, and they're both listening, so, yeah. Yep. <laughs> no. <laughs> I've already made that deal, man. I knew what I signed up for. Like, give me a bunch of things that do a bunch of cool stuff and spy on me. All right, I I understand this Faustian deal. <laughs> 
<laughs> yep. <laughs> yeah, I don't I don't mind it. I just I want to do it on my time when I know it's on or when it's off. Well, I'm sure. See, that, that's where I always boil down to. Like, I know any alphabet agents. You can cut it on and off whenever they want. So <laughs> I have no illusions. I mean, outside of like <laughs> clipping the battery and putting it in a... Um, that's one thing I don't... I'm Faraday already, cage. <laughs> just, just the ability to like pull a battery out of your mobile... Because that at least gave you Got some peace of mind. Right. <laughs> some peace of mind. You're like, mm, there. Mm hmm. Yeah, no, this camera gets unplugged after we're done with the shows. <laughs> I do have that security feature built in because, yeah, good luck activating a half working DSLR. <laughs> <laughs> we're gonna go over yeah. there and push the button <laughs> right cut it on hit the back oh make sure you get the zip tie set up just right um <laughs> I mean in, unless you've like broken into my tablets then you've seen some very unfortunate things nothing terribly <laughs> sexy <laughs> it's mostly pictures of Ven naked <laughs> No, I said not terribly sexy. I know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Mr. Alert. Yeah, I know they have hardware switches, but I'd rather just not deal with it. <laughs> to use the phone apps. <laughs> Linda, we make the worst kind of music. I don't know, man. You know you got a tree in your house, right? <laughs> See, that's a lot of glass to get knocked over. That's what that is. I have the 1796 Strider. <laughs> and it's not mine. It works. It's just that uh, everyone who thinks they want to use them uses them for like a week and then they get returns. Like, this is slow. Can I have a laptop instead? Yes. Yes, you can. <laughs> I think so. <laughs> Matthew, you got a recent one, though, didn't you? You got, like, last year's model. Yeah, this is the 2017 model. <laughs> mm -hmm. you, you can play a mean game of X-Bill on that. Yeah. <laughs> could play the uh, Mahjong uh, that comes with Gnome <laughs> out of the box. <laughs> I am equally as baffled as I am impressed by people who can genuinely burn an afternoon playing Mahjong or Solitaire. I, it's just like, I wish my brain, I could put my brain in like that wired mode of like mm -hmm. that, that low cost entertainment. Give me some of that. <laughs> I love Solitaire. <laughs> you know, or just like being able to sit back and watch TV for a day. I can't get away with that, man. Uh, if I sit down to watch TV, I tend to fall asleep. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I get bored. <laughs> yes, that's why I fall asleep. <laughs> Even if it's something I like. I was like, well, can we do something else and something else? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Like, ah, now I'm content. Right back. Taco clock is counting down. <laughs> 44 seconds. <laughs> Fifth gen and six. Right on. With the 8,000 CPUs. And it's still 14 nanometers, though. So. <laughs> well, it's Intel. Come on. <laughs> man. So, Intel was like, hey, man, here's our 1080, 80, whatever it X. It's our new HEDT platform. And got whooped. <laughs> yep. Like, <laughs> It got whooped in half of the tests that most people ran. It's like, oh, the 3950X is faster. That's $250 cheaper. So the, uh, yeah. This is one of the things I'm looking at is <laughs> just across the board. It doesn't compete. <laughs> nope. <laughs> Unless you really want to play games on it. 
Because that's why you buy an 18 core processor, let, right? Let me tell you about the joys of <laughs> HEDT gaming. <laughs> eh. They can, yes, you were correct. They can technically play the video games. Yep. Of course, it still gets trounced by Intel Zone uh, 8 core 16 thread 9900K when it comes to that. So. You know, oh, yeah. <laughs> Like, even on, like, the same AMD, like, um, the 2100 is 10 to 15% faster in gaming than this 1920. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, it should be. Also, all of you retailers holding on to that 2050 that I'm lusting after. No one's going to buy it at that price right now, so come on. Yeah, I did see the prices of the old um, 2990WX. Mm -hmm. And it's like, that's still $1,500. Yeah. You're not going to sell those now. <laughs> and I think they're like genuinely holding out like with a false hope, right? They're like, well, maybe we'll get a few. <laughs> Because, <laughs> yeah, the um, 3960X is 1400 mm -hmm. and it destroys it, so... <laughs> I mean, you, I, I guess we could definitely say if you were looking into, like, the TCO, the buy-in, because then you, you get the mm -hmm. stupid expensive motherboard on top. Like, even first-gen thread rubber boards are stupid expensive. Um... The only people with that would buy that right now would be in an emergency. Yeah. <laughs> they had to replace, like, an existing one. And even then, I think most would just end up going for the cheaper option. <laughs> Thank you, Tux. <laughs> He's quite the cute vampire llama. <laughs> the Draculama. Draculama. <laughs> So, who else just randomly ordered a new Steam controller because it was <laughs> five quid? I didn't, but I did uh, tell Dave, and he's like, ah, they're already out of stock. He's like, oh, oops. <laughs> they were back in this afternoon. Oh, all right. Okay. <laughs> I'll have to tell him then. <laughs> Alan, all right. Yep. I did too. I don't even use the thing. Um, but yeah, why not? Five bucks. And it was like all in with the shipping. It was like 14. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> all right, my turn. Give me a sec. All right. Okay. <laughs> Ven's Lampire. Uh, Lampire, La Lampire, sure. <laughs> Llama pyre. Llama vampire. It's a vampolka. <laughs> yeah, I couldn't turn that deal down. I, what I'm genuinely hoping is they're, they're there have been different runs of the Steam Controller. Jordan and I have the same run of the only way to get the batteries out is with like a flathead screwdriver. Yeah. <laughs> you have to pry them out. And that's one of the reasons like I'll use it until the battery dies. And I'm like, man, I, just, I, I don't want to go through that. Of like <laughs> digging them back out. Cause I don't want to damage the batteries, man. I use rechargeables. Yeah. So maybe I'll get one where the batteries just pop right out. I'll use it more. Especially since you can use it on Bluetooth now, so I don't have that extra dongle laying That's around. That's nice, yeah. I have two of them, and my first one is the original one. And then the second one, it's easy to pop them out. <laughs> the second revision. I'll be happy with it. Um... <laughs> At the end for of five the, bucks. <laughs> that's all it is, is five bucks. Didn't need it. Yep. 
that mm-hmm. that was a pure consumerism like bah, why not maybe oh i know my luck i know my luck i'll end up getting an index <laughs> oh yeah <laughs> oops we messed your order up we sent you an index take it back no you keep it Oh, uh, Mr. Lurk, good for you. I'm glad you f- you're finally going to get a Steam controller at $5. You can't pass it up. <laughs> well, it's a classic, Jill. You see, here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to keep it in a box for two decades. <laughs> then I'm going to sell it to some YouTuber who's into retro <laughs> gaming hardware. Yeah, <laughs> there you go. Yeah, right. I mean, it's a perfectly good yeah. controller. I like it. Um, there's games it's good at, and there's just games it's junk at. I wish it had, like, uh, t- dual thumbsticks. Mm. That'd be nice. But um, it's about seven months ago. I forget which website did it, but they dug up a patent for um, a Steam controller, too, a second revision. Which was going to incorporate some of the uh, touch stuff that's on the uh, knuckles. Mm. That'd be interesting. I could see that. Yeah. Well, my favorite thing That'd about the nice. Steam controller is actually the paddles underneath. Mm-hmm. I love that. Um, it's a, the controller's too big for my hands, but I like the paddles underneath. I usually I, I utilize those in every game I've played it with. That's something I was definitely going to think about because you know I know you had one. Yeah, that's awesome. Because <laughs> to me, the steam, I was like, well, this is about the right size. It's a little small. I was like, poor Jill. She couldn't afford this thing. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it's a problem. <laughs> but it, it's weird, though, because the buttons are the right size for you. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> They're tiny. The face yeah. buttons are tiny. <laughs> yeah. That's like, yeah, I, the face buttons on these are bigger. <laughs> yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I like the size of the buttons. It's just the distance with everything. Oh, and, yeah. And I mean, if I'm... Holding it on my, uh, you yeah. know, uh, oh, I can't reach. My hands don't reach. <laughs> like, like, yeah. <laughs> but I love the paddles underneath. That, like in Rocket League, that's really nice. Yeah, the camera. that's really great um, for the camera. Hundred percent, though. Yeah, I do like that. <laughs> Daily driver, though. X Club. <laughs> I don't know yeah, why. The unquestionably, this one I can actually hit the. Um trigger with my right hand and a bumper without having mm. to move my uh, thumb from the face buttons. You know what? Oh, so, yeah, nice. I can use this controller. <laughs> Man, I try to have sexy time with my PS4 controller mainly because it was like I paid a lot of money for that thing. For me, anyway, like I don't, I don't like spending a lot of money on controllers. Yeah. But the buttons are never right. The prompts, I'm like, oh, nope. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, there's a game every now and then. It's like, oh, hey, hey. <laughs> and Aww. It, Hello, it, cheese bacon. Cheesy. It's <laughs> totally a mental thing because you know what button that is. You can remap that yeah. and your brain meets instantaneously. Mm-hmm. You do you're just like, oh, the button on the left. Okay, so circle is X. Thing. Yeah, I played the PlayStation 2 for so long and ah. then I started using like uh, like controllers on the mm. on the PC and everything was Xbox. So yeah, my brain has both. So mm. whenever I see one on screen, it's like, sometimes I get a bit confused. Is that the cross or an X? Mm. <laughs> hey, but now we have <laughs> SDL2 and every now and then we get lucky and the right prompts show up. That's and it's not games SDL2's actually made use of fault. SDL2. Right, right, right. Yeah. <laughs> because it, does come, it comes to part two of what I was getting to. Yeah. 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 <laughs> the developers have to make use of it. All right. Yeah. <laughs> Let me grab a refill, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, and um, we're going to do a show. Cool. It's going to be hot. Hot yeah. Wednesday. <laughs> Linux action. <laughs> yeah, I'm not taking yeah. my shirt off today. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, cheesy. So I um, um, was thinking of grabbing a few of the $5 Steam controllers um, to gift to people for Christmas, but the problem is they won't probably come in time. So, but I think I'm going to pick up a couple anyways, because I already have two of my own, and then it would be nice to give away as gifts, but Valve takes a long time to ship their stuff. 
<laughs> and especially with this sale, <laughs> it's probably going to be in two months before we get them. <laughs> but yeah, you, can't, for a while, you can't pass uh, that, pass it up. <laughs> yeah. Oh, seriously, it's five dollars. Come on. Yeah, I know. <laughs> <laughs> But yeah, after my uh, DualShock 2 died, and I had the Steam controller, and I actually got very good at using the touchpads as, like, um... Well, a touchpad. Yeah. <laughs> nice. I just had to do one thing, which was to completely swap the functions between the right and left um, areolas. Which was, uh, since it's usually, like, uh, the D-pad on the left one, and the camera on the right one I just switched those around it's like okay very good <laughs> mm -hmm. yeah very good that's what I like I like about the steam controller is how flexible it is and I, I I'm like you Pedro I do like that that pad but no one mm -hmm. makes a knockoff of it that's smaller <laughs> so <laughs> and uh, I, I do I love the controller you got me because all the buttons are close together yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. The, uh, mm -hmm. what are they called? Hori? I think it's Hori. Uh, yeah, they make, like, the third party controllers for most of the consoles, and they have a teeny tiny uh, DualShock. Oh, version. yeah. I, I got one. <laughs> I got one. <Yeah. laughs> I finally got one of those. <laughs> My trigger broke because of the issues in Hong Kong. I doubt I'll hear back from them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean... Go on eBay. Probably someone selling a replacement... trigger. <laughs> you could probably find the whole trigger mechanism for pretty cheap. Mm. Oh, I'm sorry. Mir, your game sire. <laughs> Had issues. No, that's, that's a, definitely weird. the best <laughs> inexpensive. You know, I've I've tried out several. You know, I've bought several of the twenty dollars and under controllers, and that is the best one at that price range. Honestly, if you want something that you know for a fact will work and just gets detected as an Xbox three hundred and sixty controller, and you don't want to pay for an Xbox three hundred and sixty controller. The Logitech F310 for the wired yeah, the version classic. and the F710 for the wireless version. Yeah. It's like, oh, all right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, direct input, man. I mean, it, it actually, they have the switch on the back to switch from D input to X input. X input, it, yeah. <laughs> the power controller, what's that? Yeah, cheesy. Picked up a power controller for fifteen dollars. A power? <laughs> I don't yeah, know, man. We, I, we I like have like him. thoughts and ideas of what a power controller is. <laughs> <laughs> it's a power glove. <laughs> yeah, power glove. <laughs> See, no, if they oh, brought okay. that back it's up, just I'd the, have name, to buy the it. name of the. It's the name of the company. I think is power. I've. <laughs> oh, a, a power. power. Right. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, Cheesy, both Pedro and I have 8-bit dues, the little mini controllers, and we love them. But the but the problem with them is there's not enough to hold on to, so your fingers slip easily, like what Pedro is holding <laughs> And up. if you're playing yeah. a game for three <laughs> hours with this controller, your hands start to cramp a little bit. Yeah. <laughs> At least <Yeah>. mine did. <laughs> yes. <laughs> if you it's like that problem. an hour, an hour and a half, that's fine. Three hours, hell no. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I would break that if I sneezed on it. <laughs> they are very um, chunky. There's not like any hollow space they at have all. The uh, like egg thing going on. Yeah. Yeah. They are very, very, very Fine solid. Cholesterol. They yeah. don't bend. <laughs> oh, here's my my mug. <laughs> That's a Today mug. I got a well, not a mug. I'm sorry. Usually, <laughs> usually, <laughs> Jill, wake up. <laughs> And Jill holds up a cup of lies. <laughs> it is 
called a tumbler with straw and lid. You know, I always show off my uh, my Linux. It's a mugs. sippy cup, Jill. But it's this a is sippy my sippy cup. cut. It's, it's, I love tux. <laughs> you gotta get the um, stainless steel straws. Yeah, I do. I did pick up some of those with the rubber tips, like you use, Ben. Yeah, <laughs> they're great. Home intruders, yeah. easy to take them out with that regular straw. <laughs> yeah. just hold this right through a sternum. I mean, it's awesome. I have, I have to be honest. That's why I've stayed away from stainless steel straws because I, I do uh, sometimes stab you know, yourself misjudge. in the sternum often. Yeah, I, I've stabbed myself in the eyes with straws and stuff. Stay so away from I've, Cheetos. But those have the rubber tips on them. <laughs> Stay away. From Cheetos. <laughs> I always say that, man. You know, every time I try to convince myself that I'm a clever human being, I stab myself in the eye with a Cheeto. Yeah. <laughs> All right, let's get a show going on. Yes. Yeah, and oh, my, uh, <clears throat> my self reminder that I'm not particularly clever is when I get home and I'm looking for the keys and going through all the pockets, and the key is in my hand. Oh, Until yeah. <laughs> I try to reach for one of the pockets that requires me to extend my hand, it's like, oh yeah, I can't be holding the keys while I try to... Oh, you. Dumb. Yeah. <laughs> you dumb. <laughs> In w one of the bathrooms I've moved, and it's not one I typically use, but um, just like the rubbish bin for moving. I've tried to throw so many things around on just right onto the floor. And we're on like week four, too. Mm. <laughs> no, get, get rid of muscle memory that easy. <laughs> no. I, I mean, I guess it would help if, I mean, it's always like something I've like picked up, like I've tracked in a leaf or something. I don't normally use that one. So it's just like, oh, yeah, I know there's a little bin in there. And like, boom, right on the floor. All right. <laughs> <laughs> All right, beautiful people. Let's get to go. Christmas time. <laughs> and welcome back to Linux Weekly Daily Wednesdays, where we can sit back, Hello. relax, take that midweek break, talk about all the fun things we found going on in the world of Linux, open source, and all the other things that... <laughs> let's not stab ourselves in the eye with Cheetos. We were just discussing that. <laughs> yes. <laughs> this... Talk to your kids about Cheetos before someone else does. Um, hey, everyone. How's it going? <laughs> I'm Vince Stone. That's Joe Bryant. That's Pedro Mateus. Yay. Pedro's got a Microsoft product. It's hot. I do. <laughs> yeah. It's a I little do, bit I terrifying. do have a Microsoft product. It's a Surface, but it's from work. So the other side. There it is. <laughs> so yeah, it's a, it's a Surface Pro, the 2017 version, and it works all right with Linux. Well, I, I'm stretching the definition of all right here a little bit because out of the box, the touchscreen doesn't work. Kind of important when it's your only method of input to start mm. with, uh, mm -hmm. then once you install a custom kernel and you sort all of that out, the on-screen keyboard, it, it's temperamental at best, uh, finicky at worst. Uh, you were so, talking about that, and I, I was having flashbacks to that Windows 10 tablet I had. It's yeah. Like, it, it does, it, does <laughs> it work just enough to make you angry at it? Oh, yeah. <laughs> and then uh, you crack open feels. the terminal because you think it's like, oh, I can fix this right quick with a command. It's like no tab button on the on-screen keyboard. Mm. Oh, God. Oh. <laughs> okay, fair question. Have you set it down to prevent it from breaking? Uh. Yes. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> and now I'm going to pick it up again, uh, put it to sleep, and put it over here. <laughs> All right. Jilly Bean, what's new with you in Aww. LA? So I'm actually looking forward to playing some games this Thanksgiving weekend, um, including Shadow of the Tomb Raider. I picked up on a sale at Humble and a few games I want to get during the Steam sale. So, yeah, that's a, I, I just I need a weekend to just play some games because I haven't had a lot of time to do that, except the games that we play here on Linux Gamecast. <laughs> right on. Right on. Man. So happy Turkey Bird Day to everyone here in the U.S. <laughs> I finally... That's tomorrow. I... Yep. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Wow. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. Pedro's like, oh, yeah, that's a thing. <laughs> Dude, um, 
So that crazy Microtech edge router that I bought that I've had for like four weeks now, I finally get it to like tag UDP packets and route them, I think, correctly. We'll find out. I mean, if everything just poof, catches on fire. Mm. I still don't <laughs> recommend buying one, even though you have like small telecom grade abilities with it. But yeah. I, I, that's my little victory lap. I'm like, hey, I did a thing. And then again, I know nothing about networking too. So small miracles, kids. And, uh, oh yeah. Check right now. We were talking about this. These uh, are five yes. quid, five bucks mm -hmm. plus a few dollars in shipping. Unless you're in Canada, Valve doesn't like Canada. Um, pick them up. They're in stock. They are being discontinued. So even if you're not into gaming, you can use this as a really good touchpad device on a desktop. I mean, that's, with haptic feedback. Mm -hmm. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I think that's everyone's first experience with this. You're like, wait a minute, I can control the journal. Oh, okay. Neat. Click, click. Then like it gets boring after that, but still <laughs> pick one up. They're a little bit of history. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. How about we get right into it with Might as well. a slim book? Yeah. Yes. You may remember awesome. that slim book that I poo-pooed all over uh, because, let's be honest, it wasn't very good and it was stupidly expensive for what it did. This one, on the other hand, this one seems to be a much, much better value proposition. So uh, this is the uh, new, um, what are they calling it? The Slim Book Pro X15. It's a 15 inch, as the name would imply. It's got the teeny tiny bezels around the screen, sort of like your XPSs do. And it's got an Intel uh, 9750H i7. It's a uh, six core with 4.5 gigahertz turbo and a GTX 1650 Max Q. That's like the highest end graphics card you can have on a laptop and still stay under like 35 watts. So. Yeah, bunch of laptops, the high performance ones have uh, that uh, teeny tiny little discrete GPU in there. And yeah, the price on this one is actually very, very nice. It's also got a 2K uh, display, but they were saying that the price, where are you? There you are. Uh, it's 1200 euros, which mm. is exactly the same price as the i5 version uh, of the one I reviewed. So it's like, oh. Oh, all of a sudden, this is nice. This nice. is actually <laughs> really, really nice. <laughs> so, yeah. <laughs> Do you think it's nice enough to make you want to get one? No. I mean, I'll, I'll say just looking at the screenshots, it looks less flexy. Yeah, it does. Yeah. <laughs> and sturdy. this is a 15, uh, it's a 15 inch uh, laptop. So it's, it is a chunky boy. But honestly, no, just because I have... Very good gaming machine right here. Oh, that's and right. I have that's El right. You, you, you have a Surface Pro now. You, you don't care about any <laughs> Linux stuff. I mean, the Surface Pro is running Ubuntu. So I'm just listening. I'm that. just seeing how many times I can get him to pick it up in hopes that he'll drop it. I'm trying to do him a favor. <laughs> but yeah, no, laptops for me battery life right now is like the important thing because i'm not going to be doing anything that's like performance intensive mm -hmm. so this one while it is a very nice laptop and if you need something that serves as a desktop replacement that's pretty good that that's yeah. actually pretty good <laughs> right on Jill, well, do you have any yeah i was really impressed because it it includes two webcams one standard 720p and one for facial recognition it's it's really nice to have that um, on a laptop that works with Linux. And so that's awesome. And even though it has a thin profile, you can add another SSD, which is really nice. And higher end laptops do allow you to, you know, put two hard drives in there. So it's nice, um, even though it's so slim that you can still do that. And I love <laughs> the Slimbic Pro marketing campaign. Um, is using hashtag no more apples in Linux conferences because that is a thing. So they <laughs> they are are trying to get that market of all those Linux users who go go to the Linux conventions and are using MacBooks. Do you think maybe they're <laughs> so... trying to get get the market of the type of people that will burn that much money? On yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. Definitely. <laughs> it's like and, those people know. have money. Let's target them. <laughs> hey man, make it look pretty. Speaking of yeah. making things look pretty, we can do that with the. Uh... A little bit of glimpse. Yeah. What's that? So glimpse uh, 0 0.1.0 image editor, the fork of GIMP we have talked about, 
has debuted. And it is a vanilla version of the GIMP without the Wilbur mascot branding and Easter eggs. And, you know, they're going to be, in the future, going to be doing some updates to it and some Speaking changes. Speaking of Mac. But, <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. And it doesn't support Mac OS at this time. <laughs> or 64-bit. Well, yeah. No, oh, you got to use 32. Okay, you still can technically Well, it's just the notice. installer. Yeah, yeah, it's just the installer. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, um, and, it, and it does have a flat pack and snap that you can download now. And I was happy to hear that an app image is also in the works as well, because mm. that is my favorite uh, mm, containerized nice. format. <laughs> And yeah, right now they are very clear. This is just a rebrand. They basically had to go through everything that said GIMP, hit Control H, and replace it with Glimpse. Uh, and of course, some things will break because they're expecting, you know, GIMP. So they had to go around and fix that. But I hope now that they have gone through all that process that they've been automating everything as they go. Mm. Because that mm. is just step mm -hmm. one. Yeah. You're going to need two through ten uh, going forward to actually get, you know, the GIMP master and then merge all the changes and do everything. If you can just pull the uh, the GIMP master and just replace everything and do everything automatically, that'll save you a lot of time and yeah. I will actually see a future in Glimpse. Yes. I think my approach with this is yeah. sit back and like, they did do a mention in the post. They're like, hey, man, we sent like uh, $50 to GIMP. Uh, from the donations that we received and we hope to give them more which i, I think that's in good faith mm -hmm. yep. taking a wait and see approach with this because mm -hmm. the knee-jerk reaction is come on man you're just rebranding so they do plan on doing their own thing but yep. there's a very valid point of which i've had that happen to me personally of like hey have you considered using in a work environment this open source replacement, what's it called? Oh, here we go. Um, <laughs> right. Cal say. <laughs> 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 and maybe you've had that. If you had, let us know. Um, yeah. Good luck. Best of luck. This is how open source works. So don't complain about it. Or do. That's cool, too. That's also how open source works. You already oh. stuck a fork in it. You don't get to complain now. <laughs> Amen. Yeah. Good news, everyone. A <laughs> uh, new version of Audacity is here. It's 2.3.3. They are pleased to announce that it will replace all previous versions. Um, everybody's on about Mac, understandably. Yeah. Mac, <laughs> Mac made the hard choice. They're like, yo, everything's got to be 64-bit. And then Valve was like, even us, even you, Valve. Okay. But they've done a gang of things, equalization effects, uh, just a bunch of quality stuff. But the big thing... The big thing, I was reading through this, and I was like, yeah, nah, okay. Bug fixes, you know, 150 bugs, and all that's been fixed. And you're going to laugh at me, but they're like, we've removed <laughs> the restriction of being able to export over four gigs at one Yay. time in a wave file. <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> to which 99.97 of anyone would go, what? But yeah, my brothers and sisters out there, you're like, I know those feels right. And you're like, really? Why? Yes. That, this is such an oddball restriction. Yes, I understand. Normal people do not have this. You know, you don't need to dump out. By the way, if you're wondering, it's about 5.7 gigs for four hours of one of our shows. If I'm trying to dump that out as a wave. I'm like, oh, okay, I'll just do this with FFM Bank. That made me very, very mm -hmm. happy because that stripped me up a few times. Mm hmm. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, and you know another nice thing in this uh, version is when now when you export the compressed audio formats AAC and M4A, there are now audio settings, which is really good depending on you know if you want to send it uh, to YouTube or the internets, and you know you can adjust the quality as as you'd like, and that was a really nice feature. Uh, especially since yeah. uh, M MP4 and AAC are very standard these days. <laughs> it's like everything supports AAC. So yeah, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> exactly. So it was time. And one of the uh, the things that, that jumped out at me is like, oh, uh, there were four options that we had that we've basically removed because, well, they were obsolete. There are better ways already in there to do the same things that uh, Nyquist Workbench, Vocal Remover On Demand, uh, mm. and Normalize On Load were already doing. 
So they decided, yeah, let's just uh, let's just get rid of them, mm. and they did. Mm. Sometimes you have Slaying. to kill your babies. That's true. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> man, Cloudflare keeps doing goods, and I'm I'm genuinely yeah. at the point, Pedro. I'm genuinely at the point where I, I'm like, are, are you guys gonna like wah and Dracula or something like that, man? I, yeah, there's <laughs> some things about to drop, but yeah. um, who knows? Maybe the other side of the coin is just as nice mm. uh but this one is flanscan and uh it's a well it's end map on performance and hazards i was about to uh, ask isn't flan some type of cake type thing like here's a pitcher old it's man. pudding yes thank yeah. you okay it's just pudding i'm glad we cleared uh, that up the the <laughs> yeah what uh flan does is it makes end map slightly easier to use for the particular use case of checking your network specifically for vulnerabilities, not just scanning your whole network to see everything that's there and find out what all the open ports are and everything else. No, no, no. This is just for security scanning. And it makes like all the reports that come out it besides giving you all the CVE numbers and everything else, it makes it very human readable. And they they call it uh, very actionable uh, reports, so that's very nice to see. That's uh, compared to regular ad map. That's certainly an improvement. Nice. And this being Cloudflare, of course, they also make it so you can upload those reports directly to the cloud. And I'm sure they would be very happy if you use their services to upload it to, because money. They're, mm. They are giving this away for free, so I guess they are sort of like, yeah, put it on the cloud. You know, the one we sell to you yeah <laughs> as somebody who cuts glob flare a check every month man good yeah yeah <laughs> that that's something i kind of want to play with but i'm always scared to play with stuff like that because i know how horrible i like i as soon as i saw that i was mm -hmm. like i don't want to run that against this router because i don't know what i'm doing <laughs> setting this thing up it's probably just seething oh. <laughs> That's the thing. Uh, if you actually go look at the uh, documentation that they have on their GitHub, mm -hmm. it's very easy to use, very easy to just point at the network and say, go, fetch. And it just drops a list of CVs on you and you go, oh, God. <laughs> oh, see, that that's it. The <laughs> setting it up and running it. That's good. And I can do that in a few minutes. Yeah. It's I don't want to see those results. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so we are going to die. All right. That's cool. Hey, everyone. Uh, Early this week, yeah, <laughs> we finally got a kernel. A few people were waiting on. It's kind of a big one, and it's five point four. Yeah, it's out. yeah, <laughs> awesome. So yeah, Linux kernel five point four has been released with lots of updates and important changes, and uh, the new kernel now um, contains the lockdown mode that we talked about last month, which helps to improve the separation of the user identifier or root and the kernel. And this really goes a long way in hardening, hardening Linux from arbitrary code execution from malicious code supplied by user land processes. And also the high performance, low memory and read only enhanced EROFS file system is now out of staging. And this is especially good for live USB CDs and firmwares for mobile phones and SOCs. And as we've talked about here many times in LWW, this is the first kernel release to include XFAT file system support. Yay! <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Microsoft Woo! did a thing and it's finally yes. here. <laughs> yes. You mean I can finally use that? Wait. Yes. <laughs> you could already use it, but you could it already required use it. Yeah. proprietary stuff. Now, Blobs. it's in the kernel. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I kind of Yay! assume that because my thumb drives work. That's pretty neat, man. Um, <laughs> let's talk some real stuff with it because mm -hmm. that night it's like, hey, man, I have Debian. Everyone likes Debian jokes. So let's go ahead and compile this with uh, some real time stuff that I need for the audio, which I did. If you're running the NVIDIA Vulcan beta drivers, womp womp. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. <laughs> that doesn't fly. However, the most recent long-lived, uh, I think 440, whatever it is, that will build against uh, 5.4. No issues. Didn't have anything there. What made me really happy was the reason I wanted to try it was this little critter. Oh, look, it matches. Everything's red today. Ah, uh, it's Christmas <laughs> spirit with vampire llamas. Um, <laughs> because these would not work if you had a Bluetooth controller. It would be able to stop us down link. It just got hung on the uplink. This has been a known issue since October. Mm. 
Um, it's because they forced uh, encryption on the Bluetooth connections. And guess uh, what the encryption depth on those controllers is? Purple. Yeah, basically. <laughs> so <laughs> uh, the moment that they saw, oh, you have no encryption? Okay, drop. It works now. And I was very happy. We were talking earlier before then. I was like, I never used this controller. And I, I, I'm forcing myself to use it because I... You know, it costs whatever a regular controller is, which is way more than I'd ever spend on something. I'm like, I have to use this. I have to get my money. Mm -hmm. It's like, really? All right, fine. Now I can use it again, which I probably won't. But work for the real-time schedulers underway, which is, you know, you can get like a low latency desktop premium kernel if you're building that, or you can import the patch set for like a pure real-time. Both of these boxes, um, you know, do the right shot, Finn. It makes more sense. These boxes are running legitimate real-time kernels for audio processing. Jackbox is nice. running a low latency because it's not running Debian, it's running um, 1804 from Ubuntu, but they do ship a very good low latency kernel, which is also running a low latency kernel on Threadripper. All again, this is all for Jack Audio, but they're bringing all of that from the, like the hardcore real-time stuff into the kernel itself. So it's awesome. Kind of looking mm -hmm. forward to that. You know, it's going to save you from like having to manually patch your curl. If you've mm -hmm. ever been through that, then you get to experience <laughs> the nightmare that is trying to get drivers and like capture mm -hmm. cards set up under like hard real time. That's why I don't run like, oh, by the way, if you have an NVIDIA card, there's a secret flag to make the driver compile the kernel module. There's a reason that the flag is secret. Dude, it's like <laughs> secret to where good luck finding it on Google. <laughs> It's uh, if you extract the driver package, the run file, and you actually go look at the readme, it's there. Uh, but it's uh, yeah, there's a reason that that particular flag doesn't show up very often. Well, you really don't mm -hmm. want to be running <laughs> GPUs on the real time kernels. Mm, you can do Intel. I mean, I'm running the Intel. Uh, yeah, oh, open that's, source. Let's just yeah. that. You also don't be yeah. running Black Magic. Capture cards, <laughs> which we have three in Threadripper, which I had to test out because in the documentation they're like shrug emoji. They're like, good luck. I mean, we're not going to say it doesn't work and it never really worked right. So, but speaking of GPUs, uh, actually, this is the kernel that everyone who bought a Navi card, the 5700 uh, 5, or the 5700 XT, this is the one that completes the Navi 12 and Navi 14 bits. Mm -hmm. And if you uh, already got your your hands on a like a 3400G mm -hmm. or a 3200G or one of those new um, Athlon 3000, uh, those are part of the, I think it's the Renoir um, APU family. And this enables uh, support for those. Uh, also Arcturus, I think it's the mm -hmm. Athlon that's on Arcturus and the 32 and 3400G are on Renoir, something like that. Also, if you have one of those newfangled Intel laptops with the actual 10 nanometer uh, CPUs, this enables support for the Tiger Lake GPUs in them. So that's nice. <laughs> Short and sweet, real question. Mm -hmm. Can I plug my 5700 XT, hit the power button, and everything's going to work now? Uh, no, you still need Mesa 19.3. <laughs> <sighs> right. yep. But hey, man, at least I could probably get it to run Wayland. Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Absolutely. And, uh, well, this person, which I read through the whole article, his name is uh, Samuel Wallage, and I read through the whole article, it's like, oh, pseudo Pacman asks way, so you're an Arch user, and not once does he use the word Arch anywhere in it. So it's like, oh, very nice. Mm -hmm. A little golf clap. So with that uh, particular <laughs> preamble out of the way, uh, what he wanted to try it was, uh, he's a big fan of tiling window managers. Uh, he used uh, uh, i3, and when he heard that there was a tiling window manager available for Wayland, Sway, he decided, you know what, let's give it a try. And long story short, he tried it, he describes exactly what he did to make it work, and then it got to the point where it's like, uh, this is a worse experience than what I was having. That so is a very apt description for everyone's initial <laughs> Wayland experience. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, so uh, he ended up going back to X11, which, I mean, this is a story we've heard many, many times. Um, if 
any of you out there happen to have like an old laptop that you've tried to get well and running and you can actually get most of its the stuff done it's that point where you hit something it's like oh but i can do this things in specific with x that i want to do right now and you can't and then you go mm-hmm. oh and then the cracks start to appear that's like the first one and it's like oh yeah that game i really like to play doesn't work with wayland Mm-hmm. Oh well, back to X. <laughs> when I read this, my big thought was that I think this does kind of speak a little bit of, of like in volume to Waylon because this blog post could have been made five years ago and I couldn't have told the difference. Oh no, th- th- mm. this is still the same point. <laughs> five years ago, which is it's like Waylon's almost. They're, almost baked. Yeah. If, if five years from now, are we still going to be saying, it's almost got it down, guys? Yeah, we need to get past the almost and into it's basically there. It's, I know broken record time. Let's drop that needle. Uh, it's hard to compete with good enough. Mm-hmm. Th- that, that is a very difficult foe to vanquish. And and Valve themselves, you know, the people who brought Steam to Linux, they were like, yeah, we don't see the point in Wayland, so we're not going to support it. If that changes in the future, we will reconsider it, but we don't see the point. Oh, that's cute. Laughs in EGL. Um... <laughs> <laughs> no, that was good. <laughs> One of the things is, like, uh, you could do a lot of stuff. We were talking, like, uh, with Pipewire, with, you know, we've made advances, you know, with the audio stack and the video stack screen sharing. Pipewire has enabled that. Even Chrome has given you an option to use that experimental feature. Um, Then again, it's Google. They might kill it tomorrow. Hey. Um, (laughs) But there's, like, nothing I'm doing here with X really translate like this entire system would be wop wop you want to do an audio podcast i could probably pull that off yeah mm. hmm. yeah <laughs> good luck i look forward to yeah. not being five years maybe a year from now two years from now. doesn't who positive yeah. thinking <laughs> well, doesn't humbuntu ship with wayland by default though uh by default i think it still goes into x11 but Aww. wayland is there yeah <laughs> Boo. Okay. Yeah. Um, <laughs> man, Geo. Yeah. <laughs> so this is uh, Man GL. It's a graphical man page viewer based on the Mandoc library, and it uses OpenGL to display man pages with clickable hyperlinks and smooth scrolling. And this is, I was really impressed with this. Uh, being able to use a draggable scroll bar with the mouse is so convenient instead of having to hold the up and down arrows or page up and page down for a long time going through man pages. And uh, it it's really great because it, it auto launches with the search feature. So you just have to search for the man page you want to look at and it pops up. Or you can, you know, type it in the, the command line, uh, of course, with the... Uh, the name of the app you'd like man pages you'd like to look at but i was just really impressed and it works really fast and it's just it's just nice to have some progress with our man page viewer (laughs) (laughs) oh come on man pages works fine you know it's worked fine since 1993 yeah Uh, yeah. i had to think about that it's like first of all if you're typing man in the terminal you're you're mm-hmm. at your wits end. That or what I thought about <laughs> is when was the last time I really relied on ah right. Shortly yeah. shortly <laughs> before I got my first like always on persistent internet connection. Exactly. Like, ah, you were that, using man yeah. before then. <laughs> so <laughs> that books, man. So yes. yeah, locally cached manuals, they they're very nice to have in that particular moment that you know you done goofed and all of a sudden not even the internet is working anymore mm. uh but yeah having the search function there is something that i very much appreciate because one of the things i didn't like was having to grab at straws uh, yes almost literally <laughs> because i had no idea what to look for so i was just trying to filter down to what i was trying to do this is nice. You know, a search mm-hmm. function is nice. <laughs> that, dude, I mean, 
GUIs have their uses. When I saw this, you know, it's like, um, like synaptic like for package mm-hmm. management. It's like, <laughs> yeah. that's my favorite thing in the world when I need to do two or three yes. special things with that for sorting. Yeah. Anytime over the mm-hmm. terminal. Any other time, I don't do everything in the terminal. But yeah, this is yes. a really cool tool. Yeah. Um, subtitles. <laughs> Who here can uh, yes. read? <laughs> Zimu. <laughs> Uh, that just means subtitle in Chinese, but yeah, uh, this is uh, <laughs> this oh. is yeah, it's a uh, penguin. It's a um, a subtitle player that spawns a teeny tiny semi transparent window that you can resize to your heart's content, and you can download subtitles, load the subtitle file, and it's even got like a fast forward and um, skip buttons if you just want to skip to the next subtitle because something is slightly out of sync. They do recommend that you use um, open subtitles to get the subtitle files, but yeah, it's um, it's going to be very hard to find for that really obscure, obscure video that you really want to watch. Yeah. So you're most likely going to have uh, better success Better success. Yeah, that's good mm-hmm. Englishing there. Uh, <laughs> if you are, say, watching like old public domain movies on YouTube. So you're that's saying a if, yeah. if you're not a hipster, you're going to have a better time. <laughs> uh, well, if you're not a hipster, you don't need to worry about this. Then again, this all boils down to whether or not I can read. <laughs> yes. Yeah. And so I can pretty much take it either. Yeah, finding the correct subtitles, mm-hmm. that that can be yeah. a lot. Yeah. What? Uh, I guess this is uses. Jill, what do you think? Yeah. Well, I was really, really happy about this because usually I use VLC, which is is wonderful, you know, downloading your videos and playing with subtitles. Like, but I'm this allows... Free to admit, the only time I use subtitles is like, oh, I guess there were... Na- <laughs> oh, let's cut those off. I know how to cut them off in every player. <laughs> well, <laughs> right for click, animes and whatnot. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> animes that I want to listen to, you know, in the original language. <laughs> this is, it's it's nice to have the subtitle si- subtitles. So, but what's cool is this allows you to go to any website and view subtitles. And like Pedro was saying, that's if you can get, you can find the subtitles for that particular uh, movie or video. But what's really <laughs> nice is you can change the fonts, font size and color of the subtitle text which is actually a game changer for me because the font sizes on most subtitles played on videos are too small for me to read. And it's really annoying when I want to watch some of my favorite animes in their original language and not being able to read the subtitles (laughs) is an issue. (laughs) Come on, man. At some point, you're going to have Trans or Z memorized. Uh, Yeah. (laughs) (laughs) Yes. That's a cool tool. Go check it out. All this is going to be in our show notes, as we mentioned after the fact. There'll be a link in wherever you're watching that. Go track it down. Left-handed trackball. We talked about we talked about it, Pedro. A ploopy. And now... Yes. <laughs> yes. I heard you say that word again. Yes. <laughs> now Pedro can have a ploopy, too. <laughs> yes. Yes, supposedly <sighs> I can, because uh, okay. they made a left-handed version. <laughs> yes. We're not talking about what you're thinking, you naughty, naughty person. We, uh, the source code is a completely <laughs> yes. open source trackball that now supports left-handed individuals. I'm left-handed, but, you know, I learned how to use my right hand like a normal person. So, yeah. Well, your right hand looks like a normal person's. Yeah, my left hand also has no feeling in it because I destroyed the nerves by driving a nail through it. Which, <laughs> yeah, oh that sounds like a personal problem. <laughs> yeah, right? <laughs> Don't tango with me, son. Um, but we have Lefty Mouse, and you can download all the files for it, open source firmware, and build this critter. And Pedro was like, uh, man, I didn't get the graphic queued up, but you know the cat meme. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> well, I just need to find a place with a 3D printer now because I am curious. <laughs> like this whole idea of build your own hardware is something that I am very curious about. Mm-hmm. And I don't have a 3D printer. I can't afford a 3D printer. And even if I could, I ain't got nowhere to put it. Uh, so, oh, you can yeah, order I'll one online. To... <laughs> Jill you have it 3D ain't got plan. nowhere to put it. <laughs> <laughs> I ain't got no room. Uh, but oh, yeah, it's how many oh, laptops do you have? <laughs> okay, sorry about that. <laughs> yeah, but that's those fit on a shelf, a teeny tiny shelf too. <laughs> you can make a teeny tiny three D printer. 
That's not going to be very good, is it? No, it'll be great. Dude, come on. <laughs> this, this is not a high-resolution project. Also, you live yeah, in Cambridge, no. man. So, you know. Yeah, yeah. but uh, there are... I know there are a couple of shops in town, um, like paper shops that have 3D printers, and people actually take their 3D printer files and print them off there. <laughs> uh, it, you mentioned in the notes that uh, Cambridge University also has a, a 3D printing society, so... Mm -hmm. Yeah, might be worth a shot. Uh, Nori goes there a lot, so I might have her poke around. <laughs> I, I'm yeah. more inter going to be more entertained about you finding a way not to do this. That is going to make me happier. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, I'm, yeah. I'm still going to have to get the electronics. <laughs> oh, do you have to yeah, solder? There, because I want you to live yeah. stream that because you don't know how to solder. <laughs> Wait, you I, do yeah, know how no, to solder. You're just bad. Practice. It's even better. <laughs> <laughs> I do know how to solder. I just don't have any practice with it. Yeah. <laughs> Where are you on blindfolded soldering? Uh, does it involve alcoholic beverages? We can make that happen. Cool. <laughs> <laughs> Stay tuned, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, what do we have? Oh, Blender RTX on. Yeah. That's the much anticipated <laughs> update to Blender 289. Milestone is here with over a thousand fixes and several important updates that were planned for the 28 series. Most notable are the sculpting tools, overall support for NVIDIA RTX ray tracing, and cycles, Intel open image denoising, and better outliner, a new file browser, and much, much more. Yeah, man, we're talking about mm -hmm. over 1,000 fixes, and I got my attention. Well, got my attention. It got my attention. Pedro, quit Englishing badly. It's contagious. <laughs> um, <laughs> I, I'm always on the lookout for trying to use, like, the 0.5 of an RTX core that's in the 2060. I'm like, come on, little buddy, do something. Dance. And um, might mm -hmm. be playing with that. The Intel Open Image Denoising. That's neat. I'm glad that made it in there. And, you know, the file manager. Yay. Yes. Yay. Yay. <laughs> because it's bad. It's right now, the new file manager, it's less bad, but it's still <laughs> bad. Um, What's the problem yeah. with these? Uh, all right. Kudos. Great release, ladies and gentlemen. Back to that 90s file browser then. <laughs> Because you run into this. You normally run into this with commercial software. Oh, yeah. You do. Oh, yeah. And they they're like, locked to that version. <laughs> well, it's like, we need to reinvent the wheel. Let's do our own file. Like, why don't we just use the one native to the system? Reasons. Okay. <laughs> and this, this is getting there. I mean, this is a step in the right direction. I'm, I'm looking at you, yeah. Magic Da Vinci. You are completely <laughs> guilty of this. That is the only program I'll go out of my way to drag things into it, man. I do not want to deal with and it's kind of the same way with the blender i don't want to navigate that monstrosity but they look yeah. like they cleaned it up a little bit jill yeah well you know what then it's true of all the 3d animation software <laughs> the file <laughs> managers are usually you know old school <laughs> so uh that's so true um but what's nice is uh this release in includes a uh, complete sculpting tools overhaul for a better workflow and it has uh, new new brushes for sculpting and new tools as well as updates to grease pencil uh, which also has new brushes and tools and um that that's actually hu huge because uh doing 2d animation in a 3d animation package yeah blender was the first to do that <laughs> so very important and there's lots of updates to the real-time renderer ev um which uh, makes shadows a lot better, and it just it it's making the viewport viewports uh, look beautiful when you're uh, working on projects. It's really amazing. Yes. And they also <laughs> included um, Intel's uh, Open Image Denoise, mm -hmm. which yes. is something that I'm very much looking forward to. The GIMP folk uh, introducing to mm -hmm. GIMP. That would yes. be very nice. <laughs> yeah, all the graphics packages need that. <laughs> yeah. Denoise know is something. Dino is the video, man. Yeah. <laughs> video, yeah, sure. I mean, you can do it in Blender. But uh, just for pictures, let's say you have a picture that would otherwise be fine if it weren't for all the stupid low-quality uh, camera noise uh, that you got from your phone. Mm-hmm. Why don't you use yeah. like one of the two <laughs> available ones in GIMP? 
<laughs> yeah. <laughs> because they don't work so well. <laughs> then just import it into Da Vinci and use that static frame with the neural uh, uh, yes. AI. <laughs> or, you know, you could just make a plugin for GIMP. That'd be nice. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Listen, man, what you got to do is call an Uber and oh. <laughs> Let's just see how long we drag it out. Okay, we got to get into a slice, but before we do that, we want to thank each and every one of you making this show possible, keeping us loud, live, independent, commercial free. You are the reason we're here. And uh, if you want to help out, there's a gang of ways to do that over at linuxgamecast.com. That support button. We've got our beautiful Patreons. We've got people kicking in through LibrePay. Uh, we've got affiliate links with Humble and stuff like that. What else do we have? Oh, we have merch. Unfortunately, we don't have any yes. vampire llamas yet. <laughs> um, <laughs> we're developing that technology. Don't worry. That's yeah. yeah. <laughs> going to be a thing. But speaking of vampire llamas, man. Speaking of vampire llamas. Hmm. I Go love on. You can reach Yeah, it. so. <laughs> oh. Well, I guess I'll take this time to uh, thank Artharon in chat for gifting me the game Quadrilateral Cowboy on Steam. I absolutely love it. It's a first-person puzzle game, exploration game, and hacking game, and it's so much fun. <laughs> <laughs> I got a gift because I put this on my wish zone. <laughs> Yay, Ben! <laughs> That's why this showed up. This is also why I don't put this on my wish zone. This is the stuff that shows up. <laughs> <laughs> but I like it. I'm definitely going to traumatize some children and adults with it. Uh, as a thing, first, I don't think, Don, you're on the uh, Find Up Standing Cannibal one. Oh, so, oh got to fix not that. Yet. <laughs> going to finish that last space. Uh, that's kind of brilliant. That'll be the end of 2.0. Uh, but you do get to send a little message, and I read it. It says, hi, Linux Gamecast. Enjoy your gift. Mm, quite the wordsmith. From Don. <laughs> <laughs> True words have never okay. been spoken. <laughs> Fair enough. <laughs> Still lands you on the final upsetting cannibal wall. <laughs> it does. It closes out yeah. 2.0, baby. That's super oh, yeah. sweet. <laughs> um, but I do want to mention if you are a patron, I'm starting a new series for podcasting on Linux. And the first one's up covering leveling audio. So if you've ever had an issue with somebody's too quiet, then someone's too loud and you don't have a multi-track audio set up, you too can get everything sorted using nothing but open source software. So I kind of walk through all that and it's pretty straightforward. Mm -hmm. It's installing the plugin uh, with Audacity and just how to get all that stuck together. So go check that out if you are currently throwing some wet stinky cash and making this possible. Up next will be I'm going to be doing some more basic things, like just getting up like a mix minus setup with a basic mixer, how you do Skype interviews, then how to track down. We're going to do hardware stuff too, how to track down ground loops. USB ground loops could be an issue. What works, what doesn't. Mm -hmm. I got some things planned, man. So thanks everyone for making that possible. I'm going to imagine that's a turkey pie. <laughs> yes. That is a patience pie. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and so this, cool. well, this is uh this was really neat actually. Uh someone mm -hmm. um had already built uh Jay Dosher, I guess that's his name. Uh he'd already built a um a raspberry pie that was supposed to be waterproof and it, he called it the field pie kit and well, uh, a lot of people pointed out some issues with his design. There was no keyboard uh, built in. Uh, it wasn't exactly watertight. Um, it wasn't, uh, well, the wiring was all over the place, the original one, and the connectors were very fragile, and there was no EM shielding whatsoever, and if you're going to be used it out on the field, you sort of kind of expect some of that stuff to be in there. Mm -hmm. So he completely redid the whole thing, um, he started from scratch, still using uh, the Pelican case. In this case, uh, he used the Pelican 1300. Yes. And he made it look really, really nice. Uh, there, the pictures, you can see that picture that it's got like the actual flip switches. 
those look awesome. Uh, it was those <laughs> yes. you were look amazing. For that. You're like, oh, hipster clicky flip switch stuff. Yay. Mm. <laughs> yes. <laughs> uh, you also uh, found a teeny tiny little uh, keyboard, mechanical keyboard. Oh, uh, no. To no, no, I just the, want to set it on fire. Why'd you have to go and ruin it? <laughs> <laughs> uh, to fit on the inside of the lid. And since he couldn't really work a way to, you know, EM shield the unit itself, he created a cardboard box with, uh, well, aluminum paper. <laughs> and just put it in there. <laughs> yep, basically. And yeah, no, it's the... As a Raspberry Pi project, he used a Raspberry Pi 4 with a fan because, you know, in, you know, closed off watertight thing. Uh, it's going to need some ventilation to keep the uh, Raspberry Pi 4 cool. I don't want to say cold, but cool. Um, yeah, the TSA acceptance factor of this one is great because, oh, it's just a Pelican case. Okay, what do you have in there? Oh, it's a Raspberry Pi project. Oh, can you open it? That's that's a bomb. No. That's just straight up a bomb. You can open that fine, because <laughs> yeah. about that time you'll realize that old man Vin has installed an application that starts beeping. <laughs> <laughs> and you'll go, oh, wacky Vin, as you're being drug away to a detention facility not marked on any map. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, yeah, it, it looks really great, but don't take it on a plane. Please. Yeah. <laughs> Call ahead if that's in your carry on. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> so, maybe you have something in your carry on. Maybe you're working on a project and you got something made of awesomeness and you want to tell us about it and uh, or just ask a question. How can they do that, Pedro Mateus? <laughs> well, you can uh, just uh, walk up to one of us and politely ask your question or don't you try to, to hug me. I have a wool shirt now. It's hug proof because I know somebody that tries to do that's highly allergic to wool. Oh, well, yes, there are also I am. people allergic to. Uh, <laughs> uh, there you go. <laughs> Thanks for that bit of information. <laughs> <laughs> All right, uh, that's one for the checkbook. Uh, and uh, yeah, LinuxGameCast.com, hit the contact button, and there's a form. All you need to do is pick LWDW from the little uh, box at the top and then fill out the form. It's pretty easy. Uh, let us know about your Raspberry Pi projects or any other projects that you're currently working on that involve Linux in one shape or another. We will be very happy to feature those stories, those uh, projects. It can be Linux, right now. it can be Unix, it can be Haiku, OS2. Um... Linux adjacent. Yeah. Yes. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. So. React um, OS. <laughs> Eric writes, wanted to try that XFC that you guys keep crushing or gushing? Gushing. Gushing. Gushing yeah. over. Yes. <laughs> On I get a dialogue box that, sorry, man, I'm just reading it like it's typed, uh, that states my panel is locked because I'm running in kiosk mode. WTF? Question mark. Mate? I might have thrown the mate in. Fresh install on Arch. By the way, I run Arch. So how do we fix this? I... Never I've got that never box. I know it. you can unlock the <laughs> yeah. panel by just right clicking, going to panel properties, and unlock yeah. the panel, and then you can move it wherever you want to go. Jill, do you want to take a stab at it? Uh, what Pedro did? Because yeah, right clicking on it and then and unlocking it. But um, yeah, I never got the kiosk mode. No, because I I I've, <laughs> I've never had this happen, so I was puzzled by it. <laughs> Kiosk mode is usually something that's went horribly wrong. Yeah, because that's usually when you boot want to boot it into web, you know. Well, web a kiosk mode is when you just, yeah just want to put it in lock out all user interface, and you can yeah. run in kiosk mode for a minute and like wait a minute, I want to move this icon. It's like no. Hmm. I'm sure there's got to be a configuration file to edit that you can edit for that. <laughs> Not really <laughs> a configuration I, file. I mean to cut it yeah. on, but if it's enabled, what you got to do. Uh, Probably just Google this. Uh, look for your cache directory, your sessions folder. I think it's like mm. .config xfce. Blow that entire thing out because it's corrupted. Yeah, It'll rebuild that. You might have to set your icons back up. Worst case scenario. But that'll fix okay. that. <laughs> I only okay. know that because that I've encountered sense. that. Like, what? What's going on? Oh, you on? have? Oh, okay. 
okay. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yes, <laughs> but never, I'm, never I'm in the middle of like <laughs> compiling XFC with the wrong stuff. Like, I wonder if I can make this one and, zzz, and rolling it back and pushing it back in from the packages. So ETC X, there you go, right there. Maybe. Uh, cheesy. Thank you, cheese bacon. I don't know if yeah. it's an ETC <laughs> though. Uh, that's the, um, yeah, that's the settings that it'll pull down if it goes into kiosk mode. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> I want to check this out. Uh, clear cache. Yeah. And live, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, yeah, it is your cache. It, it makes sense, like fall back, yeah. uh, fall back mode. <laughs> it is under cache, cache sessions. sessions. Yeah. Blow that away. That'll get rid of it. 100%. Guaranteed. Wow. No problem. Cool. Mm -hmm. Ta da. See, we learned something. Yeah, definitely. Last but not least, Pedro. AJ Reisig uh, is asking, let me ask you a question then. In the free version, I have to convert MP4 to uh, .mov to, uh, to video clips to view them. Open parentheses, kind of crazy when you can create <laughs> MP4s with DaVinci. Close parentheses. Uh, is this necessary in studio? Thanks. Mm -hmm. So I guess it's the difference between free DaVinci and DaVinci Studio. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Jill, you want to take yeah. this? Yeah. Yeah. So... Um... Yeah, so for DaVinci, the free version, you, you do have to convert the files to bring them in. And um, you have to you have to purchase the studio version, which is under $300. It's very inexpensive to do MP4 input. So that was their way of, uh, you know, getting people <laughs> maybe to purchase the product. <laughs> but it's still inexpensive at, you know, under $300. <laughs> that... <laughs> Is 100% correct. Um, yeah. I do want to point out that MP4, uh, there seems to be a mix up between uh, a codec and a container mm -hmm. because yeah. it's MPEG 4 that the issue is with. I mean, it could be a .move, .mkv, or anything like that. Still not going to take it in. But then again, you need to ask yourself if you're editing video, why are you doing it with something that's compressed? I mean, yeah. you should have a and mezzanine codec like DNX HD or ProRes. Don't use the ProRes built in with OBS, though, because it's reverse engineered and it's junk. Um, yeah. So yeah, do keep um, that in mind. Go ahead. Well, one of, one of the, the formats that I use frequently is the QuickTime MOV, the animation format, because it's, it's not quite completely uncompressed, but it's still really, really high quality. Mm -hmm. And... Yeah, as Ven was saying, you don't you you don't want to bring in compressed video, edit it, and go out to compressed because you yeah, lose I do. I want it way. super compressed. I want AAC ninety six <laughs> mono. Yeah. Then I'm going to recompress that to four, but I'm going to upscale it to four K and. Um, <laughs> So, uh, AJ Reisig, to answer your question, uh, no, it isn't necessary in Studio. Studio can let you import or yeah, lets you correct. import. And one thing you need to Everything. keep in mind, um, <laughs> even with the Studio version, you can't import AAC, period. Mm -hmm. Doesn't work. But then again, yeah, that's the issue. nor should you. Yeah. You should be recording yeah. in lossless. It should be wave. Now, if you're going to record in like Black wave. <laughs> a mathematically lossless codec, do what we do here. HEVC, H.265 with a main 10 That's profile nice. and lossless, but get a Turing card to crunch those numbers and <laughs> playback is going to be brutal unless you do um, transcoding or throw a thread ripper at it. Pro tip. <laughs> I'm just yeah. saying. Not that. even hardware accelerated? <laughs> oh, this with hardware acceleration. That's using the NVIDIA card Ooh. and 24 threads. Okay, yeah. all right. <laughs> and it's pretty smooth, but I mean, then something like that, you would just want to create like a proxy clip. Like you do something in KDE like that. Mm -hmm. I think KDE supports proxies and stuff like that. But hey, man, if you can, use a lossless format to edit it. It's going to be quicker mm -hmm. and faster no matter what you're using. If you're using KDE in live, you're using OpenShot, if you're using DaVinci. Pro tip. Easily yes. done. All right. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, we got to bounce out of here. Before we do, we're going to light up a little bit of wub wub. And play some credits. How about that? Sound like that? Yay! You don't get to see your name in the credits. <laughs> <laughs> and oh. <laughs> <laughs> Ooh, 32 kilobits per second AAC. Uh, how do you like them phone calls? 
Oh boy. <laughs> Man, I used to set up and deploy real media G2 servers. I've been dealing with video for a minute. <laughs> yeah, and Pedro hey, cheesy. earlier. Thank you very much for the uh, the bits. <laughs> oh, thank you, Cheesy. Cheese Yay. Bacon, thank you so much. Yay, bits. <laughs> and uh, Pedro earlier, I was also thinking that you could, um, you know, send send the Ploopy file to Thingiverse and have them send you a Ploopy, Ploopy already built. <laughs> Well, already made, yep. and then you can that assemble can it. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> that was the other option. <laughs> yes, Joe, but you, Pedro's strategy is to find a way not to have to do it. You're not. You're yeah. Not. So. I mean, if all it involves is uh, downloading the files, going to Thingiverse, and uploading them, I'm good. I'm yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Instead of bye -bye, buying a 3D player. See you next week. Bye. <laughs> bye, everyone. We love you. Thank you for your support. All right. Yay. Aw, thank you, Pennywise. Thank you, Sorceress. Thank you, Cheesy. Thank you, Patrick. Mirror. <laughs> Seriously, all y'alls <laughs> are awesome. <laughs> Especially everyone catching us live and uh, our Patreons and the uh, the people in the fine upsending cannibal wall. Y'all make this show possible. Hmm. Literally. It was a Patreon goal at one point, so... Yeah. <laughs> I didn't have to m mute either one of you rascals during the whole show. That's rare. Hmm. <laughs> I mean, we can still fix that. Oh, yeah. Did, I didn't go back <laughs> and listen. Did you actually bleep muted. out... <laughs> uh, yeah. <laughs> did you actually bleep out the... um? God damn it! Last week, no, I I meant oh. to, but <laughs> it, it's it was one of those things where I'd already started uploading it, then I was rewatching it. And it's like ah, oh, boo! Yeah. I forgot to do that. Right? <laughs> Wait, YouTube doesn't let you add a bleep? No, they let you yank out entire chunks of audio, but adding an audio clip, no. Sometimes, <laughs> sometimes, Brad, because um, that. Near Automatica Tomatica? <laughs> yes, was... near a tomato. Right. So I uploaded, <laughs> you know, I'd recorded the entire play session, which was 28 gigabytes that I uploaded to YouTube. Mm hmm. Over 24 hours to process it. And it finally gets them processing. And it's like, yeah, yeah, you know, that hour and a half. There's like 30 seconds here that somebody claimed, so you, we got to get all the, they, yeah, they get all the revenue for that video. And they wouldn't give me an option to mute the audio. <laughs> oh, that's why it's only 30 minutes long. That's okay. why it's like, you know what? We're just going to take the fun little battle part out and. Oh, mm -hmm. uh. <laughs> so that was another you, 22 Katana. gigs that was uploaded. By the way, if you're wondering, I can upload 12 gigs an hour. Flat out. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Nice. That's it. No, that's not nice. That's pathetic. Well. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah. <laughs> Let's see. Over an hour, I guess I could upload like five, six gigs if I could cap out the 12 that I usually get. <laughs> Yeah, Katana. I'm sorry. I meant to thank you earlier. <laughs> what did Katana do to get blamed for that? What? Oh, well, no. I was just thanking everyone um, in chat for saying nice things, and I missed Katana. He's always here, always sweet, and always supportive, and a good friend. That is not what you were saying before we went live. <laughs> 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 ah, it's a good thing we don't record the pre pre super shows on uh, <laughs> on Wednesday. Right. <laughs> That's I'm the only swearing. time that Jill actually gets to go all out. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Katana. <laughs> Uh, 
<laughs> okay, so let me check. Hey! No x runs. Trying a trick. Are you running the 5.4? The who's a what? Kernel 5.4? Yeah, I've been running 5.4 since like Tuesday. Nope. What yeah. do you think I am, an arch user? <laughs> I mean, Tuesday was only yesterday, but yeah. <laughs> but whenever, like Sunday, Monday. Whenever I posted on Twitter. <laughs> so the picture of me yeah, I saw that tweet, it. but it was, yeah. So <laughs> I didn't know if you had run Monday into morning, something yeah. and gone back. <laughs> <laughs> it is, it works. Um, no, what I'm Aww. working with is LGC Web. Okay. I missed you, brother. <laughs> this and is I get your to little... see him tomorrow. <laughs> Pro tip. If you interface, Pedro, I've talked to you about that. If you interface directly with OBS with Jack, doesn't matter what version you're using. There's an RNG chance that it will be plus or minus 150 milliseconds on the delay. Nah. Nah. That's like, mm. oh, guess who had to be the person to fix? Hi. Um, that's not <laughs> documented anywhere, but it doesn't have an issue with the Pulse Audio Sync. So we generate extra Pulse Audio Syncs. What you see there with your Jackbox net capture, that's coming over the network from Jackbox back here over the 10 gig fiber link. And it's being split out at the top is the mix minus for the Discord when we bring Discord in the after shows in. OBS vocal, self-explanatory. That's all of our audio. Then we have a stereo pair coming out for OBS music. And the Discord jack is that's going back over the uh, 10 gig for the mix minus for Discord so they don't hear themselves. Yay, science! And it worked. Yeah. Mm -hmm. With no X runs. Because there's another thing you have to do with NetJack with latency. Mm. over standard, regular, boring, copper, gigabit Ethernet that you don't have to do over 10 gig. Man. So uh, the randomness on the um, the delay, is that because when it's negotiating, it like does a little benchmark and sees what the delay actually is, and depending on what you're doing, sometimes it's more, sometimes it's less? Shrug emoji? Oh, okay. <laughs> it's that undocumented. All it, right, it's okay. RNG. <laughs> that, well, here's one of the issues. Like when you bring these issues up in like the Discord channel, they're like, "Ah, we don't know anything about Linux, even though this is a Linux section." <laughs> you, you're constantly reminded, like, like uh, well, most of the Linux stuff was contributed by outside people, not comprised of the core team of OBS, and we, we don't really know how it works. So, good times. <laughs> yeah. Right. <laughs> Like, okay. It's good to know that OBS for Linux is not bus raptor proof. <laughs> then then I walk in there and I'm like, so I'm sending, you know, six channels of uh, 48K audio over network and I'm interfacing that with Jack and they're like, just, yeah, yeah. Like, so Tumbleweeds. <laughs> let us know how it works. So if you interface it with a Pulse Audio Bridge to Jack, then feed the Pulse Audio Bridge into OBS, we're good. Hmm. Maintain syncs. Tinnitus. Tinnitus. <laughs> tinnitus. <laughs> it's tinnitus, but yeah. <laughs> you know both pronunciations are correct? Yeah, I've heard it both ways. <laughs> Here, uh, everyone says tinnitus, and, you know, some of those people were nurses and doctors, so I'll take their word for it. <laughs> well, I seriously doubt then they held you down and said, dare you not <laughs> pronounce it another way, peasant. Unless well, to they be fair, did, they even made them do that a lot to me, because <laughs> sometimes I'll say something that's really <laughs> American, apparently, and they go, oh, God, you don't say it like that. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> Okay, so how do you say it? <laughs> yeah. So after you've thrown a monitor at them, what is the... Um... <laughs> router or router? Yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> That's one of them that drives me up the wall. 
<laughs> it's like a router is a thing that you use to cut wood. It's like, uh, yeah. yes, that is also a router. Uh, yeah. But you're creating routes. You're not creating roots. Yeah. <laughs> hey, man, could you tell me the best route to the store? <laughs> yes. I don't know. Do you have a tree <laughs> that you can follow the route? <laughs> <laughs> uh, as they say, America and England. Two countries <laughs> separated by a common language. <laughs> it's the exact... Like, hearing them uh, say that American English is awful mm -hmm. is like hearing myself say that, you know, Brazilian mm -hmm. Portuguese is awful. It's the exact same thing. <laughs> I think the fun yeah. thing with American <laughs> English is there's so many dialects of it, and they don't realize yeah. it. <laughs> Like, no, all the Americans, all the oh, you Americans, you don't all sound the same. Mm. Hell no. Two, two, two. Yeah. <laughs> Jelly Bean, I'm with yeah. you on that. That should be yeah. everything. All two, two, two should be the numeral two. Period. Done with it. <laughs> all, all use cases. Your brain will work it out. And then there's also watch and watch, there, there, and there, your and your. <laughs> it's, I, I, yeah, English is interesting. <laughs> I, um, yes, I have to con, what, <laughs> 20 plus years of English, the speakings, and I'm always on Google looking up, like, grammar, because mm -hmm. it's usually correct when you're like, there's no way that's right. Yeah, that's right. Mm -hmm. That's how we're doing that. Hmm. And then at work, you have um, Dave, who is very much dyslexic. So it's like, how do you spell this word? And you have both me and Nathan spelling out the words. Like, oh, okay, different. cool. Yeah. <laughs> fixin, too. Cheesy, says Fixin. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Lusdexia, yeah, yes it is. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I realize I'm a little bit because as I'm typing, sometimes I'll look back and it's like, oh, all of the consonants are at the beginning and all the vowels are at the end. How the hell did that happen? <laughs> and I'm just glad um, my best friend is Red Squiggly Line. <laughs> yeah. Mm. Like, I, I, I would... <laughs> <laughs> That's one of the things that still bugs me on uh, Discord for Linux. It doesn't have the red squiggles. It does when you use it in a browser window. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And only then. <laughs> That's the yeah, only the way actual I'm client doesn't that. have it, which is annoying. You think my grammar's rubbish? You should check out my spelling. Um, <laughs> I used to be able to spell, um, but yep, yeah, Google has beaten that out of me. It's like, yeah. It's oh. a thing. I, I type in. Some cryptic Vin like shorthand that's good enough for the spell checker. Yeah, the, I'm absolutely with you, Shay and Jellybean, on Grammarly. It's like, mm -hmm. oh god, how do I say this sentence without sounding like an idiot? Yeah. <laughs> okay. <laughs> and actually looking up like thesaurus. And then, okay, synonyms for this word, because I'm going to be using this word a lot. <laughs> well, it's English. You legitimately can just come up with words. I do it all the time. Then it ends up in the <laughs> vernacular. <laughs> They're all perfectly cromulent given the right amount of time. <laughs> right. If you just say them with enough inflection and anger, people are like, okay, that sounds legit. Yeah. <laughs> and sometimes I catch myself... Um, like saying a word that doesn't exist and i i look at like people at work and they go oh yeah it's like wait you got that yeah i got what you meant oh cool yeah. All right. <laughs> they're just like yeah you know i i don't understand <laughs> spanish but i i, I think I get it. <laughs> oh no on the rare occasion that portuguese does slip out which sometimes it happens sometimes my mind will be elsewhere mm. and i'll be asked a yeah. question and i'll answer in portuguese and then i'll get like blank stares like oh yeah sorry about that <laughs> 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 oh boy i'd be in the hr department so quick um <laughs> Uh, 
Uh, that's the thing. Actually, uh, most of the HR people, because the Cambridge office doesn't have, like, a permanent HR staff. Uh, they go all around the region in different days. They go to the different offices. And, yeah, the HR people, whenever they come to Cambridge, it's like, my laptop's broken, can you guys fix it? Because I tried in the other sites and they couldn't, so can you do it? Like, all right, fine, sit. <laughs> so give it to me, kid. Um, I mean, yeah, get repo. Yeah, that's what I was talking about. Yeah. <laughs> well, right, so what are you having for dinner tonight? Yeah, already had. Pedro. What did you have? <laughs> oh, good, Pedro. Pizza. <laughs> Again? Ah, yummy. <laughs> We have pizza food. once a week. Come yeah. on. <laughs> <laughs> but my pizza's yeah, well, healthier. You, yeah, somehow. As a, <laughs> it's the healthy takeout restaurant food. No, it's I have like Greek pizzas and and that kind of thing. <laughs> Not I don't always have classic. Yeah, Ladies cheese. And and I, just I have I have vegan pizza frozen and vegetarian bases, pizza. and I make pizza on top <laughs> of that. Shove it in Pro the oven for anyone at home. <laughs> no pizza is health food, okay? Yeah, it, it, it can also, be, depending pizza on is not a vegetable. You could put Double salad set. on pizza. You could also and... just eat a salad, Jill. Yeah, well, I do that, too. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just going to throw that out there. You're like, no, it's better in a pizza, man. Cover it with some cheese. And some I mean, Jolly Ranchers, that's awesome. I knew so, you um, say that. Salad pizza is just like... Um, a salad where the croutons got a little bit out of hand. Man, croutons are junk food, but they're really good junk food. <laughs> no, I, I love. What are you talking pizzas. about? They're just teeny tiny yeah, little complex, bowls of carbs. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> complex carbs. Yeah, that. Mm. Taste those carbs. Taste them good. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, I I like classic pepperoni too. Every once in a while, I have that. But normally, Steve and I like the uh, what we call California pizzas. <laughs> The California cuisine. Oh, you mean thirty dollar Just... pizzas? Got it. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, kind of. <laughs> At least it's not Finland. <laughs> yeah, where you pay thirty dollars and you get a teeny tiny little no, pizza. No, sixty. Yeah. sixty euro. Yes. Yeah. And he got thank you, Steve one. Husband. <laughs> yeah, thank you, Steve Husband. He reminded me one of our favorite warm cheese bread with pear and arugula. That, that's one of his it, favorites. It, that's cheese sticks. <laughs> Now that's a pizza. <laughs> that that is an edible cheese plate, man. There, um, that looks like it has like craft singles on it too. <laughs> Look, there's um, enough tomato sauce in that pizza to basically pay for an entire uh, household of like uh, Italian laborers. <laughs> a French-like typing detected. This should be interesting. <laughs> you do not know nothing about the pizza. Ah, boo. No. That is nowhere near no, as pretentious as okay, I just go to the I'd pizza shop. Yeah, All right. But, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> eh, every now and then we'll get lazy and we'll order from Domino's. Because, mm. yeah. <laughs> well, hey, man, look at the bright side. At least you're living in a place where they'll deliver to now. Yeah, yes. yeah, that's a thing. Because <laughs> for the first year, I was not. <laughs> yeah, and Domino's has gotten a lot better, too. They they had to, because they were going downhill. But now their pizza's pretty good. Yeah, the, like, the two like major pizza things that deliver here are Pizza Hut and Domino's. And Domino's is so much better than Pizza Hut. Oh, mm. yeah. Seriously, Pizza yeah. Hut, you need to get your act together, because... It's so greasy, Pizza Hut. Ew. <laughs> yeah, there's another name we have for them that I can't say. So. <laughs> if you're eating Pizza Hut or Domino's, you better be waking up at 11 o'clock in the morning trying to get rid of a hangover. <laughs> That's Vin's use case. <laughs> or I, I guess a lot of people's use case. <laughs> Costco pizza, eh, frozen. I mean, pizza's pizza. It's edible cheese plates, I don't care plates, for Costco man. pizza much. No, it's too... I, I like my $30 pizzas. <laughs> Once you've the had best those, you do frozen don't... pizza. The best <laughs> frozen pizza I've had up to now is the uh, Ristorante ones that they sell yes. in Tesco's. 
Those mm. are really nice. They so actually good. taste really good. <laughs> if I make a pizza, I go buy flour. That's how I start. Yeah, you go, you go buy it right. And I don't I have buy a bread the base maker. already pre-made. No. <laughs> <laughs> very, very true, uh, Patrick. I actually, Mir, I just, I had one time I had a really good pizza at, at Costco, and, and but and I've had it since then. And Steve, never was how did you good. manage to post to GIF that doesn't move? Good on you, mate. That that's the next <laughs> level. <laughs> <laughs> you gift well there, Steve. Well done. It well didn't done, work, sir. but you gift well. <laughs> it's a thought Poor that fool. matters. <laughs> yeah. Oh. <laughs> Just use your imagination. Pretend it's moving. <laughs> <laughs> yes, he did. <laughs> yes, he did, Mir. <laughs> it's a ping. It's next level, man. Ping. It's next level. We, PNG we've got a created spiral. on Linux. <laughs> Portable network graphics, hey, man. Yeah. It's like, hey, man, on Linux. <laughs> I, back in the day, it's like I want something to be have a uh, alpha layer transparency and not look like poo and have more than yeah. two hundred and fifty six colors. <laughs> Thirty two bit yeah. uh, BMPs because <laughs> Microsoft. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I still well, it was so nice. The screenshots out with BMP because DaVinci's yeah. got a good system for that. Yeah. Well, PNG. You want to know a good one? Uh, the Enhanced Edition actually fixed this, and they're just PNGs now. But n the original Neverwinter Nights, if you took a screenshot, it was a Targa. Yeah. TGA all the way. <laughs> and, and that's what I was just about to say. In fact, in my workflow with DaVinci, I'm bringing in Targa sequences because that is the highest quality. That is what you what we use, like in the in the doing commercials and film. That's the format that they want us to use. Uh, uh, Katana, 32-bit BMPs yeah. did. And I meant to yes, mention done. that during the show and and spaced. <laughs> oh, man. Uh, I start reading about what they're doing with pro stuff and, like, stupid high and pro stuff, what they're working with now. Yeah. Yeah. This, this is like going down memory lane. Remember Targa? Yeah. Remember well, Tiff? Tar like, yeah, and Tar Targa was the very first format to support Alpha Channel. In fact, I had the first video capture card made by True Vision um, in the '80s. <laughs> so, <laughs> and it was that was the format we used in all the animation programs then, and they they're still using it. And part of that reason why is well, back then, you know, we were storing on floppy and then zips and CDs. It was storage space because you couldn't put a full movie. You know, we didn't have space on these mediums for a full-sized, full-length, you know, commercial. And um, so you had to use a target sequence so you could split it up on hundreds of DVDs. And God, I spent my life doing that, a lot of that. <laughs> so... So target sequence, you'll see that every graphics program allows you to bring in a target sequence. It's uh, default, and uh, that's what a lot of the companies are still using. They still want commercials done in a target sequence because it's the highest quality. There's no uh, video uh, issues. And then when you're rendering, if the rendering dies, you you have still all the previous frames rendered, starting from 00, 0, 0, 0, 1, 0, 0, 0, 0, 2. Oh yeah, rendering out <laughs> to an image sequence definitely makes sense. Yeah, so that's that's how you know we do it. We've I've always done it and still do. But now I have PNG as an option, which is really. You got nice. PNGs. You also have like yeah. You know, if you're doing any type of serious rendering, like even mm -hmm. you know at six K and eight K from a decent render box, renders take thirty minutes now, not days. So yeah, like exactly. if something barfs, mm -hmm. it doesn't matter. You're like, oh no, we have to I'm like nah, just just tap that tap it out one more time. Give it a second. I lost possibly 10 slash 15 minutes. <laughs> <laughs> right. Yeah, and, and that's exactly it. Uh, cheesy. Another reason is is because TGA was the first to support alpha channels. And so that's why all the programs have always used it and support it. And uh, yeah, so that that's the primary Mary format that I have my like advanced uh, students use. So they learn that process. And then the beginning students, I usually put them with like the animation MOV codec or YUV or something. I remember because <clears throat> I was nice a filthy the... Windows user at the time. And yeah, whenever I wanted to open a TGA, 
because never would have screenshots. It's like, I can't open these and paint. I'm going to need another yeah. bit of software. <laughs> well, yeah. So the thing with TGA, that's what that 32-bit that is. Um, the 32-bit includes the 8-bit alpha channel. And so when you're you're exporting from the graphics pro programs, a lot of them will default to 24. But if you want to do alpha, yep. you gotta get, got to do 32. <laughs> and what's nice is, like, for instance, um, in DaVinci, um, if I'm rendering on Blender and bringing in DaVinci, if you make your background black on a Targa, it's automatically going to key out because that is the alpha channel. So that that's a trick going from all the different graphics programs with Targa. <laughs> I'm trying to think, why would you bring something from DaVinci into Blender? No, Blender into DaVinci. Ah, that makes more <laughs> yeah. sense. Oh, I said it the reverse. Let's see. <laughs> All right. Hey, man, where, where's the love for SVGs? Although, <laughs> although, you, although the reason to go the reverse, Ben, is for doing backgrounds and stuff like that. Animated backgrounds and animated texture well, I'm maps. I'm just saying I wouldn't want to render out video or anything, yeah. for that matter, in Blender if, when I had a NLE laying around. Yeah. Because <laughs> uh, the video I posted uh, up on Patreon, I was just playing around with uh, some of the Temporio and um, just basically the denoising. Just... Yeah, that's awesome. But that is so brutal. The <laughs> six minutes total. Like the in and out, about three minutes a piece, a little over an hour. Mm. Mm. And that's using yeah. compute. Yeah, yeah, that's using a <laughs> GPU. <laughs> that poor little 2060 yeah. was slammed at 99%, using 130 watts out of its 166 <laughs> watt envelope. Yeah. I've had a render. Um, one time, I had my last student project. And I always save several months for rendering because, uh, you you know, you spend a few months creating it and then you got how to have several months to render on several machines. And this is in the 46 days, um, 24 hours for one frame because I had, you know, like 50 uh, objects that were um, um, re with reflections and it's got to re render each, you know, the all four sides of that object. Uh, it, it, Things are a lot better these days, <laughs> but, but that was well, a thing. Yeah, I was and about I, to say that. It's got it like even my little tiny 2060. I was like, that's funny that you bring that up because I was <laughs> playing a fully ray traced Quake 2 this morning at 1080p yeah. in real time at 40 frames a second. Yeah. Which I know. that sounds like oh, such junk. <laughs> you, know, you, you tell a regular gamer, you know, somebody's like, that's, that's stupid, that's bad frame rate. And like, you understand how amazing that is. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's amazing. Yeah. I literally had a project that took six months to render, and that was on four 486s because they were, because it was, uh, you know, taking literally 24 hours per frame. And, um, you know, now I could do that in just a few minutes, but it's still it's still an intense file. Even loading when I, I brought it in Blender, and it still takes a while to load. <laughs> I was like, wow, because I was you know pushing the envelope back then. We were doing stuff that you weren't supposed to be doing. So <laughs> run five hundred megahertz. Yeah. Oh. Much like networking, I've done everything to avoid to have to do anything in 3D. It's neat mm -hmm. to play with, and I want to keep it like that. Mm -hmm. like, that's neat. As I have said, <laughs> anytime I was like, ah, X, delete expletive, I have to learn Blender again. It's usually a once a year <laughs> thing. <laughs> learn it to do like one little thing, and I'm like, okay, let's my brain dump that knowledge. All right, we're good. Ah, there was someone at work that logged a call with a service desk. It's like... I need a computer that can do uh, Blender and VR. It's like, this is the NHS. Mm -hmm. w what's your use case there? Oh, we're developing this application for uh, viewing 3D models to help surgeons get things. Mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. I think you need to get in touch with the software development house. Uh <laughs> Because <laughs> the most powerful laptop we have is the one on my desk, and that quadro is poop. 
<laughs> yeah. It's about on par with a 750. <laughs> That, that, mm-hmm. that sounds like a job for like some V100s. Nice. Yeah. <laughs> Go up to my boss. So, can I spend 10,000 pounds on a GPU? <laughs> Man. Oh, I, mean... I hear you, cheesy. <laughs> He's talking about his renders. God. I used to, when I was working professionally, <laughs> I. I... I would because I had my render farm here and if I needed more computers I just I, I just take it to school and farm it on like 60 computers <laughs> that works <laughs> it's amazing how things have changed yes <laughs> yeah. yeah truly <laughs> so Steve are you enjoy having pizza tonight <laughs> Might, maybe tomorrow night <laughs> oh I mean no tomorrow's Thanksgiving Pizza Maybe Friday night. Weirdos. <laughs> Turkey pizza it is. <laughs> mm, that doesn't sound good, does it? I mean, it's uh, oven turkey, right? It's probably fine. <laughs> Help me out. What's oven turkey? That's how you make turkey, usually. <laughs> so why the need to throw oven in front of it? It's a qualifier. Because when you say oven turkey, I'm like, oh, well, then what is there? Um, blender turkey? Oh. No, you make pizza, you put it in the oven, and then you cook the meat on the pizza yeah <laughs> deep fried turkey Mike's deep fried anything guessing. except like maybe mars bars you would try that <laughs> i would probably try it probably have the one bite and say nope <laughs> with the crushing terror and realization that i kind of it's like, yeah, no, this is absolutely delicious, but I will have a heart attack if I finish it. So, yeah. <laughs> I have a perfectly good deep fryer on the um, like top of the cabinets uh, running around in the kitchen because it had a chicken leg setting. This is me, okay? It, it, it had the, you know, hot temperature, 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 just one of the settings instead of a numerical reference. Just had a chicken leg. I'm like, I'm getting that, that... It's still <laughs> I think I've used it once to make fries. Yeah, POV yeah, they Ray. Had, uh, <laughs> air fryers, um, which supposedly makes fries healthier. Um, but they were like 60 pounds in Tesco's. It's like, no. Mm. It's too much. <laughs> well, it's up there with my, like, misfit kitchen utility appliances like i have a quesadilla maker that i don't even know if i've used it i've taken it out of the box clearly but a toaster oven what okay do do yeah a sandwich oven? maker yeah. <laughs> i don't know <laughs> there's the things nobody will take basically like, here would you like a deep fryer um, uh, i have a, a treville um sandwich maker bought off amazon and that got some <laughs> use that got so much use that the handle for the top of the lid mm-hmm. just broke <laughs> it's uh the, it's like it's metal in the center and then it's plastic all around it so mm-hmm. the handle just went okay you know yeah. pedro you live close enough to a tesco where you could probably pick that up thanksgiving in a can Probably. <laughs> they have yeah. everything in a can there. <laughs> the multi-layered Thanksgiving dinner. That's a tradition. <laughs> Might have to stop at Tesco's on the way from home, from work tomorrow. <laughs> just say it, man. There's, like, if you, you get a mono speaker and just play some of the saddest music you can, sit in a corner and eat that cold. It'd be awesome. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, beautiful people. I gotta make mm-hmm. a show. Speaking of okay. rendering things. Yes. <laughs> Bye, everyone. Bye. We they love you. We'll be back uh, <laughs> Friday. Wait, Jordan may be uh, doing something tomorrow. Mm-hmm. So stay tuned for that. Not with Sandy, apparently, which is unfortunate. I know, it's terrifying. <laughs> yeah. Friday, mm-hmm. we're doing Jackbox trivia night. Yay. So hit me up in Discord if you want to participate. And I do mean if you want to participate, Don't I don't make assumptions because... You know, don't think it was like, oh, I'm just going to have a space reserved. Let me know. You know, I don't want anybody showing up going, but I thought I, well, you never told me anything. 
<laughs> Let's try to avoid that. All right, everyone. We will see you next week. Peace. <laughs> bye bye. Mm-hmm.